hello everyone welcome to my space i trust that you're well i hope you've had a good week i've had a busy one fruitful one though thankful for everything a few days ago we had snow and usually it's a beautiful sight isn't it the only part that might not be as fun is if you're not able to drive as easily and smoothly as you're used to doing all the trains get cancelled delayed and all other than that just watching it through the window or sometimes walking as long as you've got the right shoes on the appropriate ones with good grip underneath then it's a beautiful sight so yeah we had that a few days ago but it didn't take long to get all cleared up so it was okay to drive and still catch your train for those that drive and those that do get the train so I'm going to share on something inspiring, encouraging, um, insightful. And hopefully at the end of this share, we would have picked up a thing or two from the word. And just in addition to that, be filled with gratitude, really, at the wisdom of God being displayed in his word. I've got open here Psalm 105. I'll read 17 to 19. And then we'll analyze further by reading another scripture. So if you want to go to there, you can, or just listen. Verse 17 says, so this is talking about Joseph. He sent a man, so God sends a man, that man being Joseph. Before them, even Joseph, who was sold for a servant, whose feet they hurt with fetters, he was laid in iron until the time that his word came. The word of the Lord tried him. I'll just read 19 again because that's where the focus is. Until the time that his word came, the word of the Lord tried him. So if you look at it at face value, it would raise more questions in your head. Word is mentioned twice there. First his word and then the word of the Lord. So that means the Lord was not the one that spoke the first time. So who is he referring to? Is it Joseph? When did he speak? What was it about? Is there anything we can learn from it and apply it to our destiny? The word of the Lord to us. Timing relating to what word that the Lord has said concerning us or to us about our season of change. And seeing his word come to pass. There's a lot embedded in there. So let's go right to it to get some background. We're going to look at Genesis chapter 41, 9 to 13. And that would highlight the word of the man, Joseph. So that word, or oh, I've let that out. I was going to read Genesis first. In verse 19, where, where he says, Until the time that his word came, the his word there is talking about Joseph's word. So we'll see that in Genesis 41, 9 to 13. Right, okay, here we go. Then spake the chief butler unto Pharaoh, saying, I do remember my faults this day. Pharaoh was wroth with his servants and put me in ward in the captain of the guard's house, both me and the chief baker. And we dreamt a dream in one night, I and he. We dreamt each man according to the interpretation of his dream. And there, and there was there with us a young man, an Hebrew, servant to the captain of the guard. And he told him, hang on. And we told him and he interpreted to us our dreams. To each man according to his dream, he did interpret. Verse 13. And it came to pass, as he interpreted to us, so it was. Me he restored unto mine office, and him he hanged. So he started off by saying that he admitted that he was wrong. He did promise Joseph when Joseph interpreted the dream and it so happened. 
that he would remember him, but it didn't happen. Two years passed. But Joseph had been in, in jail for a long, long time. My mentor at the time, some years ago, said, I think they did some discovery and learning and found that Joseph had been in, brain, in the prison or in jail for 12 years before he interpreted the dream and then had another two years. Pardon me if I'm wrong, but I believe that was what was shared. It was a few years ago. But at this point, in verse 13, the man was saying to the king, and the reason for this conversation in the first place was Pharaoh had dreamt the dream, and his wise men, magicians, and all could not interpret the dream. And so this servant came forward and said, Oh, I remember my wrong. There's a man that his words, his interpretation to our dream got proven. It came to pass, me you restored to my office and the other one you hanged. Now there's something to learn from there. When you connect it to what we read in the book of Psalms, he said, until his word came to pass, then the word of the Lord tried him. The thing to learn from there is, when God has spoken to you via dreams, visions and all, a lot of the times or the lesson we are learning or picking up from the story of Joseph here is what would give you an indication of your time of fulfillment of that word from God concerning your life, your future, whatever, will depend on the word that you've given to those he sent to you being accomplished, being fulfilled, being proven to be right as we see in this case. So there's a connection in the two seasons, you see. God had given Joseph a word or several words through visions. And according to the book of Psalms where we read, it says that the word of the Lord tried him. And how did that word try him? Things had changed. There were various reasons things happened that could have made him come to the mindset or conclusions that, you know what, perhaps it was my mind talking to me. The words that I saw or the message that I got out of that dream will probably not happen. Because firstly, where he had them dreams and visions were was in his father's land, isn't it? His nativity, he had his family there. And in the vision, it was the sun, moon, and all of them stars bowing before him. His father, I believe, got the interpretation or knew or understood what the, the dreams and visions meant, meant. He shared it with him. His brothers hated him because they thought, what are you trying to prove? They were already jealous of him that his father loved him more than the rest of them. And so having moved from there, being sold from that land to Egypt, that was one trial. He found himself in the house of Potiphar and the wife. And anyone would have thought, you know what, I'm not in the land of my nativity. I'm in a place where I have to do everything to survive. And that's the word, because the word will present different opportunities or situations that will try your faith, your stance, your determination to keep your, your eyes on focus or in focus of what has been said to you. So he found himself away from the location of his birth. One could have said, I would rather not trust God anymore. I'll not pray as much as I used to. Let's just learn their ways here, adapt, fit in. So that I flow and you know not carry on living as a slave. And that situation presented itself to him when Potiphar's wife came trying to get him to be intimate with her. But why did he say no? He said, Far be it from him to do that gross wickedness. Because the master had committed everything in the house to him. Only the wife was left. And he thought this was being presented to him on a platter. He could have thought, no, he thought he could have said, Hey. You know, I didn't have my dreams and all them visions happen. I might as well fall for this or give in to this and have maybe more rights than anybody in the village, in the town, because the woman will favor me as well as the man already favoring me. But no, the world trying him, he came out victorious. He knew something because you know what? When God, for want of the right word, I'll use captive here. 
when God wants to bring you into some kind of captivity, he will show you visions, he will show you dreams. Now, if you be determined enough and it will create such a deep conviction on your inside to know that one, God is not a man to lie, the son of man to repent, you would have taken in his word so much, so deeply into your spirit that it doesn't matter what trial or temptation comes your way, you're more resolved. Them temptations will only drive your conviction deeper into the ground that I'm not going anywhere. Then, only then will you be able to pass those trials. So I missed it all. He said, far be it from me that I will do such wickedness. He had the fear of God still alive and strong on his inside. Plus that thought he kept it alive like a fire burning on his inside, didn't he? Because the interpretation to them dreams spelt a few things. That one, he was royalty. There was kingship in his divine destiny from God. There was prestige, rulership. And even if the position that he found himself in Potiphar's wife was the, like a million times the opposite direction, of what God had showed him in them visions, it did not sway him from the fact that, hey, I'm going to get there because man did not give me them dreams. It was God. So he stood his ground. It went from bad to worse. He got cast into prison because she lied and made them allegations. He kept it alive. So during those period, he was being tried. And similar things happened to us in our day. I'll take a woman, a man for... An example or examples, God might have said to you, you'll get married to this man. As a man, you get married to a particular woman, lady, what's it? In that waiting period, that word of God to you will get tried, tested. And what is it going to test for your patience? One of the most difficult thing to get tested or tried in is time. Your ability to wait, the patience, your patience level, your consecration level, your faith, your purity level. And when I say consecration, what does that mean? Some man could come to you as a lady after the Lord has spoken to you. And I do have an example, a life example. In fact, I'll use that now. There was this lady that God had said. And when, when the Lord said to her that she'll get married, that was the point when she decided that no, she was not going on that route or that journey anymore. She'd gone through a few life experiences, maybe had her heart broken, disappointment, hurt, and all of that wickedness thrown her way. And so she needed time to recover, heal from all that amidst all other activities in her life. And then God said to her, like he would have said to another a gentleman that, hey, I do have a plan for you still in this direction. When she eventually accepted the proposal, few years, or I think starting months first and then years, it did not stop. So it wasn't just the one temptation, just like we would have known that Potiphar's wife carried on trying to get Joseph to give in to her request and demand temptation. It was the same with this lady. They were the ones that wanted only to sleep with her. And the reason that temptation or those temptations came was because of the word of God that had been released to her. So there were people close to her. There were people far away willing to hop on a plane or do several hours drive to spend time and, you know, to do that sort of activity. Only, I think, one out of the many, or maybe would I say two, were willing to take it on to marriage. To show that the enemy was pushing to have that defilement. Like Potiphar's wife did not say, you know what, I want to marry you. She said, no, come lay with me. And the same for the man. There might be somebody in your workplace that will be like, I'll give you promotion. I'll give you increased pay. I'll put you in a position where all your bills and everything will get, get catered for. Just give in to my request, to my demand. And there's a word that the Lord has bound you by. And you keep that word right in front of you. And you know what? When you pass those temptations and trials, aside from the promotion, the promise that God gave to you and made to you before all of that, he would also give you some benefits and some goodies, like I would say goodie bags, that would set you on a level 
way higher beyond the normal human being because that word has tried you is gotten you deeper into the word of god fellowship you've just run into the lord and say lord i love you so much that there's nothing potent enough powerful enough that would sway me in a different direction so he rewards you for your patience and now when i was going to talk about the part of consecration because it can be split into two excuse me i just put my bible on the side so why I say it can be split into two parties. There's a consecration bit where you say, you know what, I, I will not give in to your demand for purity's sake. But there's another part where the enemy would want to tempt you to be like, okay, I will not go as far as being intimate with this person. But will you give in to the temptation to go out for a meal with them? Because in, in my eyes, my understanding of purity you don't have anything to do with that person of that is being used as a tool to tempt you. And they'll say, you know what, you've been kind to me. Or maybe somebody from the past, the person that broke your heart or hurt you or whatever in the past may come to you and say, I'm feeling bad. To make up, after the word of God has come to you, right? To make up for the wrong that I did to you, would you come out with me for a meal or accept this gift? Or, you know, let's just spend time talking. Let me explain the reason why I did this. And the thought, the enemy would minister to your head. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. It's an innocent gesture. They just want to make up. They're probably feeling hurt and all of that guiltiness. Just give in. They'll have peace. They'll apologize and that, and you can move on. For me, if you give in to that, that that's compromising on your consecration. For me, anyway. That's how I say it. So on every front, on every level, the enemy comes in with that temptation. And that word, you're being tested on that word. You stand your ground and say, no. Remember the word say, flee from all appearance of evil. And he that thinks he stands to take heed lest he falls. You might feel that, oh, I'm solid on the word. I love God so much. I'll go out for this meal, this dinner. Different things could get or go in the wrong direction your drink might get or could get spiked i was talking to somebody in an educational sector and something happened to her not too long ago and she thought as people think and he too you know it's, it happens to men when they get into the presence or company of some dangerous evil people and you think yeah i'm watchful and this is only an innocent meeting nothing and one second you look away you're distracted something could get slipped into your drink and you wake up a few hours later in a compromised position how would you get yourself out of that it's happened and what they could say to the police it was yeah it was mutual a mutual agreement there was no struggle look everything yeah there was no fight nothing is ripped so to maintain your purity, your consecration, you stay away from everything that depicts or resembles evil and impurity and keep your consecration. So when you get those trial trial period or times of trial, you say no to it. And then you get in a situation or an environment where you give words now to people and those words get proven to be true, accurate, like the butler was recounting to Pharaoh, that is a season or that would give you an indication or could give you, like we're learning from Joseph's story here, an indication that the day and the time and season of your visitation from the Lord and his word to you coming to pass is near or even right there, the season is there, begin to rejoice. Because God was orchestrating things. The butler had forgotten, yes. But when the time, because God's plan and purpose and his promises were to us is all bound within a timing, isn't it? We might interpret the timing according to our own understanding and find that we are wrong over and over until we get to the point where we say, you know what, Lord, I'm not going to attempt to try and count the days, the seasons, anymore because i've fallen face down all of this time i'll just wait 
and then the Lord might decide to appear or remind you something that he showed to you that sh should have or could have given you an indication of the timing. But in the end, you know what? If he doesn't give the timing, you just keep trusting him and be ready, be prepared like the five wise virgins that we read about. So that was what happened with Joseph. The season came, his words got proven. So you're a man of God, you are in, you're an intercessor, a woman of God, and you've given words to people and you just find yourself walking into seasons, occasions, activities where the, the, what you said to them a year ago, several months or weeks ago, just happens. And in fact, I know one lady that it happened to e this evening uh, when we are talking about it, she'd seen a vision. She is one that God had, God did say to her and show her several times that certain things will happen, some great rewards, activities will happen. She'd given it her own interpretation over a season or period and she fell face down a few times. Maybe she got a little discouraged, but the Holy Spirit being so so um, gracious and kind picked her up and said, hey, keep going. This is still going to happen. So what happened to her that she shared with me this evening was something that she's, she sees. She's a seer. So something, some visions and revelations that she saw concerning somebody and she shared it to the person in great detail. She got to that person's accommodation this evening. No plan, no prayer discussion or anything. And everything happened according to how she relayed it. And it did not click at the time until she left there and then gave them a call. I think she said it was on her way from there to her home that the Holy Spirit began to say, remember what I showed you about this and you did share with that person. This is it playing out and it's been several months and all the things that have happened have happened. Some visions and revelations from last year, still on this particular person. And she's seen it happen, some within her town, her city, some outside of her town, her nation. Several things, like you could count up to four, five different things just happening in quick succession. And it's the Lord saying to her exactly how you could relate it with Joseph's story. The Lord is saying to her, you are in your season. The words that you said to this sister, that lady, or concerning that person, look, evidently is coming to pass. It's playing out. They are being proven to be viable, dependable, them words. And it's my way of telling you as well that your season of exalting, actualization of God's plan and purpose that he said to you is here this is it right now and before now the lord had said to her that remember what i said to you in the middle of the year that gave an indication of timing and now all of this coming up so i said hey rejoice sister rejoice brother your time of exalting promotion accomplishment of god's word is here start celebrating i mean that feeling is not something that can be bought with any kind of a sort of financial resource. It's, it's so deep. It's so fulfilling. So if you're in that position, rejoice. And if you're not there yet, and over the next days, season, weeks, you find similar occurrences where words things you've shared either to your congregation as a minister or one-to-one -one mentoring people start to play out come to pass realization and that just rejoice and ask yourself remind yourself what has God said to you what promise has he made what visions and revelation has he said to you or shown you that you you've been waiting for over a period Start rejoicing because your visitation, your call out time is here. And you know, sometimes it can be a little scary, but he gives the grace. Because if it's a high calling, when he reveals you to the world and he calls you and promotes you, it means extra responsibility like Joseph had. But he had the grace, God gave him the wisdom. Because Pharaoh said, 
his he was only going to be held in through on the throne in position only joseph was made to be in charge of rule, ruling not only egypt but imagine all the surrounding nation cities coming to them and going there joseph he said whatever your word will be law so when he promotes you and exalts you to that high position you can be sure that yeah there'll be a lot it will be like a heavy weight on your shoulder but be rest assured that the grace will be there because he will not call you into something that he hasn't already prepared the resource if it's human resource financial resource and the, the ability is greater and even more needed than these other resources will be there because he brought you into there he knows that without him we can do nothing but with him we can do all things so rejoicing with the sister that i spoke about and to you brother sister listening if this is your season as well then i rejoice with you i celebrate with you for myself i'm rejoicing as well because there's a connection here as well i'm getting blessed and getting some fulfillment out of um the signs that i have seen around me as well accomplishment fulfillment viability so i am celebrating as well and looking in anticipation for what is next because it's yeah it's great so here we go god has great plans for us we're walking it we're walking into it and you brother sister congratulations having passed your period of tests trials the word trying you and you standing your ground and saying lord i love you to the end well done you and fly on and do greater things for the kingdom in jesus name amen father thank you thank you for your word thank you for your wisdom thank you for the interpretation and understanding you get in your word and how it's so relational how it's so applicable in our day your word is our life and we thank you for all of us celebrating this time because of the accomplishment how we can relate with these examples and see it play out in our lives father we are grateful we are grateful we thank you and we celebrate this time and for those other brothers and sisters that will be stepping into seasons where they'll start to see some of these signs become evident in their lives we rejoice and celebrate with them as well and we encourage them and say to them keep going keep standing your ground keep loving the lord keep praying without ceasing keep maintaining your focus because god is not a man that he should lie when he has spoken his word has the ability to produce what it talks about all we must ensure that we do is that we don't walk our, ourselves away from where we should be we should not get out of alignment so i pray for you that you keep getting keeping strong and courageous in the name of jesus thank you father in jesus name amen god bless you thank you for stopping thank you for listening and if this relates with you what you've been going through the season you find yourself and what is ahead or maybe you've even experienced it, something similar and you want to leave a comment please do would love to hear from you rejoice with you and have others get encouraged by your story as well and yeah we'll see you again next time god bless you